Hello students, I welcome all of you to the today's lesson on applies the quantum theory to explain the intensity distribution of black body radiation. Okay, let's move into the topic. Black body radiation. By the latter part of 19th century, scientists identified some phenomena that cannot be explained by classical physics. Two of those phenomena are black body radiation and photoelectric effects. This effect will be studied later within this topic. In our junior classes, we had studied about three ways of losing heat. We all know three methods of losing heat. That means we know from sun to our earth, energy comes as form of radiation. Because the space between earth and sun is a space that means it has no air or any conducting material because it's a vacuum, then heat is transferred from sun to earth via radiation, which is called electromagnetic radiation. And that's one form of transmission of energy. And also when we touch a hot surface, we feel the warmth. That is because of conduction of heat. That's the second method of transferring heat. And as the third method, we all know there are conventional currents in water. When we heat water, we can see conventional currents form in water. That is because heated water goes up and cooled water comes down. This makes conventional currents in liquid. The same phenomena happens in our atmosphere too. When air is heated, it goes up and when it gets cooled, it comes down. What's a black body? Before focusing on what is a black body, let's see how do we see colors. We all know that the rays incident on objects is white. That means rays from sun do not have any color. Therefore, we see those light as white. But when it incident on some of the objects, we see different colors reflecting from objects. That is because a part of energy or the rays is absorbed by the object and the other part is reflected to our eyes. The color that got reflected to our eye was seen as the color of the, ob of the object. But why don't we see all objects as white? That was because some of the part of wavelength in white, white light was absorbed by the object and only a portion of the light is reflected. For an example, assume a white, white, white light beam for an object. If the object absorbs all other wavelengths of light except wavelength of red and reflects that red light, we see the object in red. Similarly, if the object reflects back all wavelengths of light upon incident of a white light beam, the object is seen as white. And if the object absorbs all wavelengths upon incident of electromagnetic radiation, the object is seen as black. This is how the term black body came from. That's when all wavelengths that incident on object gets absorbed, then the object will be seen in black. Any object that can absorb energy as radiation and can emit energy as radiation is called a black body. A perfect black body can absorb all radiation fall on it and can emit radiation of all wavelengths. Then we get the question, do perfect black bodies exist? In real life, there are no perfect black bodies. Perfect black body is an ideal concept, same as the concept about ideal gases. But to study about black body radiation, scientists made an experimental setup showing very close properties to that of a perfect black body. This is an illustration of the setup made by scientists to study about black body radiation. This is a metal block and there's a small hole 
there's a instrument that takes reading about wavelength and also there's a thermocouple this is used to measure temperature inside the black body and there's an inner element which makes which can make the make this metal block heated and increase the temperature inside the chamber since perfect black bodies do not occur in real world scientists have made an experimental setup to study about black body radiation this is an illustration of the experimental setup made to study about black body radiation this is a metal block and there's a variable transformer which provides variable amounts of power to the metal block and there's a heating element which heats uh, the inner cavity using the power given by variable transformer and there's a radio meter which detects wavelengths of frequency emitted through the hole and there's a thermocouple a thermocouple is a device that's used to take readings of temperature inside the chamber I'll explain this setup. An object with a hollow inner cavity is obtained. This is the hollow inner cavity. A small hole is made to reach inner cavity. This hole gives access to this inner cavity. Heating element is placed in the cavity to heat the inner surface of cavity when needed. This variable transformer powers a heating element which heats the inner cavity. The thermocouple is used to measure temperature inside the cavity. This thermocouple involves in reading temperature of the cavity. When light ray enters into the cavity through the small hole, imagine a light ray enters into this cavity through the small hole, it just gets when light beam enters into this small into this cavity through this hole it will reflect it gets reflected after incident on the inner surface it gets reflected here and there and there mm -hmm. like that it will get reflected in finite number of times and in between this when a single reflection occurs a small portion of this light is absorbed by the inner surface then finally all incident ray all incident radiation gets absorbed into the inner cavity therefore this cavity is showing a properties of a perfect black body when the surface of inner cavity is heated using the heating element the surface emits electromagnetic radiation by placing a radio meter in the opening of cavity we can measure the wavelength coming out of the cavity many scientists carried out experiments with this setup and came up with some results the rate of energy emission from black body is studied with the variation of wavelength Scientists observe that power comes to a peak at a certain wavelength when temperature is constant. And when temperature is increased, the peak wavelength shifts into a shorter value. More simply, at a certain temperature, black body emits all wavelengths of light. But most of the energy emitted through the to a unit time is to a but most of the energy emitted is from a certain wavelength. For example, a human black body emits all wavelengths of light, but its majority of wavelength is red, so the object appears red. 
When temperature increases, the wavelength responsible for majority of energy release becomes lower. For an example, the previously mentioned body will now appear yellow. With the increase of temperature, objects emit radiation of a lower wavelength as major portion. Intensity of radiation is the amount of energy released per unit area of the object. Two different objects at same temperature emit wavelengths of same color. That means when we take two black bodies and when the temperature is maintained at same level, both both objects will release all wavelengths of light, but the wavelength responsible for maximum power emission is always same for two objects. Through experimental study, a scientist called Bean found that this wavelength is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature of the black body. In an equation, we can indicate that as lambda max equal Bean's constant divided by temperature in Kelvin. Therefore, if we know the temperature, since this is a constant, we can determine which wavelength is emitted more. This idea is useful to find surface temperature of distant objects like stars. By assuming star to be a black body and observing these wavelengths, release, release approximate value of surface temperature could be calculated. That means since our sun appears to us, think that a star in the sky appears red, then by measuring the wavelength, that means when a star appears red, that means that star may emit red wavelength in maximum amount. That means the majority of wavelength emitted by the star is red. Therefore, by using uh, by making calculation using above equation, we can determine the temperature of the star in Kelvin. Stefan's law. A scientist called Stefan came up with a formula relating power of energy emission from black body per unit area to the object temperature. It is experimental result. Using that experimental step, set up a scientist called Stefan came up with this formula it relates power power of energy emission from black body to Stefan's constant area and uh, uh, force power of the temperature of objects Stefan's law can be written in terms of intensity also. That means you can take this uh, A into uh, the other side and power divided by area is equal to the intensity. For a perfect black body, E or surface emissivity is equal to 1. If you know the surface temperature of a certain object, Using this law, we can find the power emission per unit area, assuming the object to be a black body. To apply this law for real objects, we add another constant called surface emissivity to the above equation. This constant depends on the surface nature and color. For a perfect black body, value of this constant is 1. For real objects, value of this constant gets a lower value than 1. That means, Surface emissivity becomes one for a perfect black body. And when all wavelengths are not perfectly absorbed, that object will always get an surface emissivity less than one. Imagine that an object is in an environment where temperature of the environment is Pc and temperature of the object is T. When temperature of the object is greater than the temperature of the environment, the object will emit heat. And when the temperature of the environment is greater than the temperature of the object, the object will absorb temperature heat from the environment. 
by relating these ima by imagining an object a perfect black body in an environment we have developed this equation scientists have developed this equation using this uh, using this equation we can calculate the rate of energy absorption or rate of energy emission from an object and when talking about this equation you should also take to consider that this equation is only valid for emission of heat as radiation but we all know that energy is emitted heat is emitted from an object in three ways called conduction convection and radiation and this equation can only be applied for transmission of heat as radiation okay guys here comes to the end of our video 